All right, guys, we're back to doing Runeterra videos. And I've taken some time and kind of planned out how I want to do this. This is going to be kind of like almost the soft start of a series. I'm going to be covering a lot of elements of deck building. And this is going to be definitely basic enough to understand if you aren't an expert on card games. However, I'm going to be explaining things in ways that I think even if you have played card games quite a lot, you will still gain uh, something out of these videos. So in this video, we're going to start with probably one of the most fundamental things, pretty much the first thing apart from the literal rules of a card game that you should learn. Um, and we're going to talk about basically archetypes, a sort of almost rock, paper, scissors uh, scenario that you see happening between them, and typically like how each one will play, what it means for Runeterra, the timing at which like each kind of deck will probably be killing uh, in Runeterra, the game, which is a bit speculatory. You know, it's hard to say like how fast an aggro deck, for example, will kill you in Runeterra, um, because you know, we don't have an optimized meta to look at yet, right? But, you know, we can still speculate on what the timing will look like. So there's a few slightly different frameworks uh, that you might have heard, and there's a few different people that will say, like, they'll explain this in slightly different ways. It ends up kind of ultimately meaning the same thing. There's some very minor variations, um, but I would explain aggro, mid-range, and control as constructs, and the framework of speed or timing. I think that's probably the most fundamental aspect of them. Aggro decks will try to rush the game down and end it early, right? Mid-range decks will, you know, have the timing of somewhere between those, and control decks will kind of play for longer games, effectively. They'll try to slow the game down and then capitalize on overwhelming with card advantage. And each of them, uh, I, I like to say, basically tries to symmetrically force a resource that that archetype prioritizes... Uh, as its goal, almost, okay? So let me explain. Aggro's main resource, I would say, in Runeterra is gonna be Nexus Health. So basically, an aggro deck will be designed to force the game into a state where Nexus Health is the most important resource, as well as, of course, delete your opponent's Nexus Health. They're gonna try to kill you as fast as possible. Uh, a control deck, on the other hand, their most important resource, I would say, is card advantage which, you know, card advantage just means the amount of cards you have. Normally, card advantage doesn't matter that much, uh, that much, you know, it, it matters, but it doesn't matter that much because of mana as a problem, right? Because, you know, when, when you have, like, five cards in your hand on turn three, you can only play one card per turn anyway, you know, unless you're playing a bunch of cheap cards. So, therefore, if you're throttled by mana, card advantage doesn't matter that much. But when you get to turn nine, turn 10, and, you know, 11 and 12, so-and-so all have 10 mana each, you get to a point where having more cards and your opponent almost just gives you a win depending on you know how big of the cards that you have right that's kind of the most fundamental resource at that stage in the game so a control deck will turn that on its end instead of trying to force health as a resource it'll force card advantage as a resource it'll stall the game out long so that your opponent is playing on your terms basically and that's really important mid-range is sort of in between it's a little like harder to explain here but effectively it just means medium speed normally mid-range decks uh tend to play to try to control the board you'll see aggro decks are going to make like kind of like Oftentimes, they'll make very aggressive trades. Like, you'll see an aggro deck tend to attack into, you know, the opponent has a good blocker. But, you know, if I'm an aggro deck, I've got, like, three dudes on the board. I don't care if you've got a blocker that will eventually kill two of my dudes. I'll still swing with my three units. I'll still attack with all of them. You'll get an, you'll get an effective block, but I'll get face damage, and that's kind of what I care about. Mid-range decks care about kind of these combat exchanges. And I would say the resource that they play for is... There's a few different ways to say it. You can say tempo, you can even say mana, maybe, but I would say it comes down to more efficiency and efficient trades, uh, just getting basically value on board, right? So mid-range tends to try to own the board and, you know, they'll sacrifice some health um, and they'll play games like somewhat long. They're just kind of like middle of the pack. So without naming any specific decks, just in terms of regions, Nox and Ionia have a lot of aggro cards. These are, you know, just very, very, very aggressive cards. These are going to be cards like Brothers Bond. Uh, these are going to be cards that swarm efficiently, like Sparring Student, Legion Rear Guard, of course, is one of the biggest ones, Legion Saboteur, Zed. Uh, these are aggro cards, typically. Their goal is, for the most part, to just put out a lot of pressure and end the game early and try to sort of kill the opponent before they come online, right? Mid-range, uh, I would say Demacia, like, don't get me wrong, you can play a lot of different colors and archetypes at different speeds, right? Like, if I'm in a Demacia building an elite deck, 
I can make it kind of more aggro-y than mid rangey but I would say just looking at elites, uh, they kind of embody what... Damasia kind of embodies what it means to be mid-range, honestly. Uh, for the most part, it's basically the idea is, you know, you control the board, you have a lot of efficient units, ways to kind of gain value uh, predicated on you controlling the board. You know, you've got, um, I can't think of it right now, but the uh, single strike, I think, that's the card that I think Fiora has that just like, you know, if you own the board, smack a dude, deal damage. On guard is if you own the board, you know, it, you need to own the board for this to be good, but it gives all your units challenger, which allows you to control the board more, right? That's a, that's, on guard is like the perfect, the quintessential like mid-range card. It's just, I own the board and I'm going to kind of sort of snowball my ownership of the board, right? Um, so Demacia is like, you know, kind of how, how you see mid-range. Um, and then, you know, Shadow Isles and Freljord uh, have a lot of control elements to them, right? Again, this is a broad generalization. You can build Shadow Isles as an aggro deck. You can build Ionia as a control deck. But just like broad strokes, you know, Shadow Isles and Freljord, they've got a lot of like late game expensive stuff, stuff that's going to get you kind of reliable value when you hit these mana turns, stuff like Trindamir, stuff like maybe Commander Ladros. These are going to basically be huge bombs for when you get to that point of the game. And on top of that, they've got ways of slowing down the game. That's really, really, really important. So cards like Avalanche, cards like, you know, I, even like Hapless Aristocrat, you know, he seems really innocuous, but for one mana, just that turn one, being able to play like two different units kind of that will cascade into each other, it's going to be really efficient at just slowing down the game for the amount of mana it costs, right? Um, so that's really important in control. You need to remember, you know, you can't have... You can't have too much late game stuff if you don't have enough ways to slow down the game. Now, you might point out Freljord also has ramp uh, in the form of like Weirding Stones. Uh, and that's okay as well. Yeah, you can you can maybe try to put some ramp into a deck like that. I'm not sure how good that'll be, but that's probably worth considering. And ramp in slowing down the game is, at the end of the day, it fulfills a fairly similar function. Right? So you end up in a situation where, you know, I've got like wording stones and I could slow down your clock to kill me by one turn or I could accelerate my clock to, you know, kill you by one turn. It's, it ends up being a fairly similar function. And so how it's going to play out is basically you will have, you know, if, if I'm in a matchup, I will like, let's say I'm queuing as an aggro deck and I hit a deck that you can not never tell right off the bat. But based on the opponent's champions and colors, I am anticipating it's going to be a control deck, right? So what that means is... Is I play at a very fast speed. My deck is about killing you before you come online, and his deck is about stalling and surviving. So in that matchup, I know at the very start, okay, I'm against a deck that will win if the time goes on long enough. I need to be very, very fast and kind of take risks, because if I don't get in there, I will just lose. If I play not just passive, but like anything other than top aggressive, I'll pretty much lose. This is actually something that's called, uh, you know, they, they, they say, I, I think there's a phrase like, who's the beatdown or identifying the aggressor. Uh, this is honestly a very, very simple concept. I was gonna make a video about this, Honestly, I don't have to. It's really, really easy. I can say in one sentence, at the start of the game, just identify whose side time is on and play according to that. Like, whose side is time on? Honestly, even if you, you know, are playing other games, it's the same thing, right? You know, in Dota, I think something that's, like, really, really important to learn or League or any any of those games, uh, I come from Dota, I probably... <laughs> If I'm if I'm doing League uh, Riot content, Runeterra content, I should I, I should start keeping that on the down low. I don't want I don't want to get crucified. Um, but yeah, uh, so in in Dota, something that's really important is basically the idea of you know understanding that that same concept, right? Like if you're at the start of the game and their team comp is a bunch of like late game heroes and your team comp is a bunch of early game heroes, you play completely differently, right? You need to play a lot more aggressive. You know, whereas if you're kind of the, you know, late game options, like, you know, at, at the end of the day, usually time is going to be a very, uh, f like, favoring one side variable in almost every game. On top of that, I will say, I think the most important question here is why do decks divide themselves into this way? Um, and the reason for being is fairly simple, but not necessarily super obvious, which is that it's pretty important that your deck is playing towards a certain win condition, right? A deck needs to kind of be somewhat broad in its approach and somewhat narrow in its approach at the same time. And that's really, really important to understand. Uh, I see a deck as kind of like a tree. 
Okay, so imagine a tree. Actually, don't imagine one because I'm just going to pull one on the screen here for you to look at. Okay, so you've got a tree. Uh, and, you know, a tree's got a trunk and it's got branches and it's even got roots if I want to do some weird analogy with that. But, uh, you know, th let's say the trunk represents, you know, it's, it's very thick, it's very strong. You've got uh, a lot of, like, stable uh, strategy. Th this is kind of your core identity of your deck, right? And the branches uh, sort of represent, like, different ways the deck can play or flexibility. You'll see new players doing a lot of things like having a lot of, like, situational cards, right? So my... What's, what's, are you okay? Sorry, she's sneezing, right? So there's not gonna be like an, an necessarily a core foundation for the deck, right? The most common thing is you'll see like one man. <laughs> you'll see like uh, a lot of kind of like aggro cards and control cards in the same deck, right? A good example is like Zed. Like if for example, you saw like Zed and Ladros, Commander Ladros in kind of the same deck. Um, I think that would be an example of something that kind of just doesn't make sense. Maybe that's not the literal best example, but, you know, uh, a very early game card, Zed, that only makes sense when you want to play very fast, right? You know, Zed's powerful, and don't get me wrong, slow decks need early game cards too. They do. But the early game cards that you're going to put in a slow deck, the low mana cards, they're going to be geared towards slowing the pace of the game down, not speeding it up. This is the most common mistake for early deck builders, which is just trying to, trying to like make a deck that's playing for too many things, right? It's really important. So know kind of the general core of your deck. You need a foundation and you need a timing window for when that deck is good, right? If you have cards that are playing for super early game aggression, super late game aggression, it just doesn't really make a lot of sense together. And you end up kind of... Um, being too divided, too split, right? The worst of both worlds, almost. Basically, the kind of final takeaway, and this is somewhat speculatory, on average, in most situations, you tend to have a sort of triangle between these three, wherein aggro beats control, control beats midrange, and midrange beats aggro. Now, again, there's countless examples of, uh, you know, this happening, but there's also countless kind of counter examples of, you know, situations where, you know, if you're a good deck builder and you're building refined decks, your lists are going to kind of be teched against things that you're uh, weak to anyway. So it ends up being closer to balanced, um, but just natural based on the game mechanics. This is often how it ends up, right? So the reason for this is actually really simple when you think about it. It just comes down to... I, Instead of using that triangle, how I would explain it is your deck either wants to play a little bit slower than your opponents or a lot faster, right? And you can see that. That makes sense. Mid-range beats aggro, a little slower. Control beats, ag uh, control beats mid range a little slower. And aggro beats control a lot faster, right? And the reason for that is just because of how HP works as a resource. If you imagine, like, you know, your HP is some amount of a gauge that you have that, you know, is kind of getting drained, but... You know, every time you lose HP, you as a player are making decisions to sacrifice board control value, or sorry, to sacrifice that HP to get some amount of value that is going to be, you know, growing and exponentiating depending on how the combat system of the game works, right? So there's a lot of situations where HP is just kind of you're paying HP to gain control and dominance of the game, right? So obviously, if your deck is a little slower than your opponents, well, you can sacrifice a bit of HP and come out with kind of a stronger situation. But if your deck is a lot slower than your opponents, well, they can just kind of kill you before you come online. So that's why we have that super traditional aggro triangle, as, as people call it. Now, again, grain of salt. There's so many reasons why this might not end up being the case. And, you know, the way I explained it, one of them is pretty straightforward, which is maybe Terra's health amounts, because it's got 20 health, right? Which is the same as magic, but the game plays faster than magic. So, like, if you imagine Hearthstone with, like, every hero having 20 health, wow, that's very different, right? You know, so maybe the amount of health it has and the speed at which games happen, maybe that is kind of thrown out of whack. But in general, I will end this video by saying that is kind of, like, the, the thing to kind of expect, just, like, kind of walking into the game. So that's something to keep in mind when you're thinking about how to deck build, when you're thinking about trying to help your weak matchups. I'm going to make an entire video about that. It's going to be, like, teching and stuff like that. Um, but effectively, that's it. This is kind of the intro guide to just what it means to kind of have a deck that is going to be playing at these different speeds, as I say, and what you as a player have to do in terms of deck building, you have to identify what deck you're playing and make sure the cards are supporting your general game plan while not being too insular on that game plan, right? 
And you need to be identifying, you know, opponents' matchups as well and kind of playing more aggressive or more passive depending on that. Lastly, as I just pointed out, deck building process, maybe try to help the matchup that's on your weak side of the aggro triangle or however that ends up working out. All right, guys, that's going to be it for me today. I'll see you guys tomorrow.